David Wayland, act, yes. actor. I, I put it, uh, or the Admiral, as you you maybe prefer. The Admiral some, of uh, acting. I think Jim <laughs> Fitzgerald. What, how was his ad lib in Hound of the Baskervilles? Well, me. what a great di title, a yeah. distinction, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have earned it because I mean you have quite a fan base in this city. Oh, uh, wow. Many Pittsburghers have seen you in a lot of fantastic shows over the years. Uh, you moved out of the area recently, but you are back. I'm back. To Back perform for Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson with the uh, uh, Kinetic Theater over at the New Hazlet. You will once again be playing Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Now, how many times have you portrayed Sherlock Holmes on stage now? This is number five. So, yeah. I mean, why do you keep getting cast as this guy? <laughs> what, what, I, what do you think? I just think, you know, uh, when Andrew Paul, when I approached Andrew Paul, I actually brought him an idea of Holmes doing a Holmes and Watson play because I saw a production of The Mask of Moriarty at the Old Globe mm. and it stayed with me and then long story short uh, I was doing uh, Jekyll and Hyde at uh, City Theatre with Marty Giles and we got along great I always get along great with Marty but uh, we thought you know we should do something together and I said well you know there's a Holmes and Watson play I'm thinking of and he goes oh great gave it to Andrew Andrew said yeah yeah did it at Picked and then from that point on, we just, the audiences went crazy for it. Uh, and uh, we just keep trying to find uh, another Holmes and Watson play. And we found a great one in Jeffrey Hatcher's one. This one, I'm telling you, Brian, city of people in Pittsburgh, it is like being at Kennywood on a roller coaster and the haunted house at the same time. Mm. It is titillating. Just think, think Shutter Island coming to life. Mm. Okay. It's really exciting. It's great for the family, but it is smart. It is witty. The twists and turns are incredible. I, I, I cannot wait to unleash it in Pittsburgh. And where is some of the uh, Holmes and Watson plays that you've done in the past were sort of send-ups, you know, very yeah, comedies? Yeah, we, well, Hound of Baskervilles was a definite send-up. Right, there right. was three actors playing the personas of it. Kind of like really having fun yeah. with that uh, Sherlock Holmes genre. Yeah. But yeah. this is actually quite this a legit a, serious a legit Sherlock Holmes story. Life and death stakes. Mm. Uh, nothing is as it seems. It's it's set in an asylum at an old lighthouse. Oh, very Three nice. years after Holmes and uh, uh, Moriarty have uh, perished. I read about that. Reichenbach yeah. Falls. Yeah. <laughs> that so dramatic conclusion. Yeah, 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 there. yeah. Without giving anything away, it's 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 exciting. So you, if having played this character five in five different uh, plays now, yeah, I, I would guess that you know this guy pretty well from a lot of different angles. Well, yeah, you? I mean, I, I I think I I like to think I do, but it's he, it's just an endlessly fascinating character. There's the more you think you know about it, the more you can go off on a different tangent which makes the character so much fun for any actor who plays it or any actor who's part of any Holmes and Watson play. Has your time with Sherlock Holmes improved your deductive reasoning skills? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I definitely think so. Uh, I, I Now I can see through my kids' lies in a heart. Ah, oh, very nice. Yeah, I, nice. I put the clues together. No, I think I think it actually, in all serious, it, it, it's helped me observe more and not react immediately. Mm. Sit back, take in all the facts, and then pounce. So from your approach to this character, is it, I mean, you, you've played him in several different plays by several different authors, I yeah. would presume. So are you playing the same Sherlock Holmes from play to play? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely bring part of myself to it, mm. you know, in, in all of them. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but I, I think I like to bring in a certain energy to Holmes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there's something really exciting when he's on a case and when the super brain is activated and when he thinks quicker than anybody else uh, and his ego gets so involved because no one can keep up with him that he's just steamrolls. Mm. I love that about him. Uh, uh, that also, But I also know that when he's not on a case, he's miserable. And I know when I'm not working, I can be kind of miserable. Mm. So I kind of take part of that, yeah. uh, you know, that that means that to me, Dave, and try to bring it to Sherlock. And uh, the title of this, uh, again, of course, is Holmes and Watson, mm -hmm. so I uh, have to assume that uh, your counterpart, uh, Mr. Watson, will be a big part of this uh, oh, storyline yeah. as oh, well. Oh, yeah, and uh, it's we got great actors. Daryl Hasham is Watson. Uh, Tim McGeever is in it. Uh, uh, Gail Pazursky, uh, uh Greg Johnstone, Darren Elliker, uh, James Keegan. Uh, 
uh, and Andrew Paul directing. We just got a great group of people. So what, uh, why do you think that Holmes and Watson make such a good team? How do they complement well, each other? Well, they're, they're, they're basically one of the beginnings of the dynamic duo, aren't they? I oh, mean, yeah. I, I think because uh, at the end of the day, there's an inherent need for both of them to need each other. They are like an old married couple. <laughs> uh, and they have a history. They went to school together. That's where they became friends. And I think we recognize... Uh, the audience recognizes not only this kind of married couple feel, but best friends uh, who can call each other, you know, who can be very honest with each other and say, Holmes, you're being an idiot, or Watson, could you please catch up with me? <laughs> uh, you know, so I think that kind of humor between uh, the two of them is so recognizable for audiences. And so. Yeah, there's a lot about the, the whole. Uh uh, Holmes uh, genre that we do recognize, like the the pipe smoking. You're gonna have a pipe in this. There's the a pipe classic? in it. Yeah, oh, very yeah, good. There's a, yeah, there's a pipe. it's, it's there's also a iconic. Stalker. Yeah, you know? um, and we won't uh, reveal, uh, I guess, any of the uh, no. plot points and the spoilers. That's got to be tough. To, yeah. Is, you know, uh, to not only you know not want to to talk about, but to conceal too in this whole process. Yes, 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 very much so. So uh, if you do happen to see it opening weekend, we want folks mm, to say, hey, keep it, yeah, keep yeah, it to keep yourself. It. The, but I, I bet this is going to be a play where we get a lot of repeat viewers mm. because it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. you, Wow. It's And how do you, you know, when all the reveals start happening, I think the audience is going to be, oh. Holy hmm. moly! So, so there's, smart. There might be an additional reward than coming back to see it, knowing it again, what like, you know. Yes. Oh, that's that's together. where I, I I miss that. And then you really know. watch, I suppose, him put it to all together yes. in the process yes. too. Yes. A good mystery. Yeah. And it, and it's uh, really interesting to see when these are adapted so well to the to the stage. Was yeah. this a book first, and then put, no, put no. It, it was written Jeffrey, as a play. Jeffrey Hatcher wrote it, uh, and he's a, a friend of mine that I, I knew from, he wrote uh, Jekyll and Hyde that mm -hmm. I worked with. And then when I was at the Guthrie Theater uh, last uh, January through April, I asked, actually, uh, I actually uh, asked him about Holmes and Watson because he was just finishing it and it was at Arizona Theater Company. And I said, do you mind, if, could you send me a copy, Jeff? And he said, sure. Send it to me. And I went, wow. And I sent it to mm -hmm. Andrew Paul immediately and Andrew went, whoa, let's <laughs> do it. And then... You know, Andrew, who's the P.T. Barnum, said, okay, yeah. let's work it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a good yeah. comparison yeah, there. Yeah, totally. Uh, so uh, does he have any maybe future uh, Sherlock Holmes plays in him? I mean, make this, uh, We've got a couple. We've got a couple that, you know, uh, we want to do it in a way that gives a hint here and there. Because mm -hmm. it seems like every other year is a good, good time to do it. Now, isn't that incredible that this character can still be inspiring written stories yeah. uh, either in uh, you know prose or on stage yeah. and uh, audiences love it there's yeah, really yeah. something there and i think you know the uh, robert downey jr jude law oh uh, yeah that helped a little happen. bit there. and then yeah. this summer is going to be another holmes and watson with will ferrell and uh uh, John C. Riley. Oh, it'll <laughs> yeah, be very be serious very too. I'm sure it's going to yeah. be all. It's going to be a complete another mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah how, how that got produced, I think, is the mystery. But <laughs> exactly. uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. real quality is over at the New Hazlet, uh, February yeah. 16th through March 4th. David Whalen as Holmes uh, in Holmes and Watson. Yeah. We are very much looking forward to seeing it. Yep. So it's be fun. cheers to you. Break a leg, and we hope you solve the case. <laughs> Hope so. Well, let's see. Let's see. It's it's a tricky one. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it. Thank Great. you, David. Thank you, Brian. Indeed.